Hey, let's check out the church, see what they've got. Let's see if they have any holy water. Church in session. You arrive at Angelic Choir Communion. You wouldn't happen to have any holy water, would you? Oh no, yeah, we got buckets of this stuff. Raphael, I want you to take Ignis, and I want you to go with this lovely lady here, and go help them kill whatever demon they found. Standing in the water is a large bear with marionette-esque joints, and as it's standing in the water, smoke is coming out of its mouth. You see uh, Raphael and Gina, they both have their swords shoved into the bear and down into the mud floor of this creek and it's wrestling with them and you're like hell yeah and you pull out your dagger and you jump forward and you stab down and it bounces right off can i throw a water balloon in anger the water you can see it like melt through the fur it gives like a shriek but it sounds distorted and then the scream dies out and you just hear the ticking and then the ticking eventually stops finley cooks it with their boot Raphael walks up and also kicks it with his boot. Sheena turns back into a human and kicks it too. <laughs> the Red Wine Lounge has always been a focal point for the hunter community in Eden's Grove. Activity inside waxes and wanes due more in part to the patrons than its proprietor. Tonight in particular, the lounge is bustling, filled with energy that seems to rival even the bartender's sloth. Hunters gather at tables and pour over notes and maps, trading stories and drinks. You hear someone warn their table of the roads at night, and another table discussing tactics to deal with the ever-increasing oddities inside of the woods. Carmilla sits at a table with someone you do not recognize, her bright smile bared with purpose at the adversary across from her, solemnly slipping from a glass. Hercules sits at the bar, his bellowing laughter is heard and felt throughout the building as he describes the grandeur of his latest endeavors. Finley and Sheena, you are inside the building, and I would like to hear where you are inside of uh, the Red Wine Lounge. Hmm. Not near Carmilla. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Finley, you have a job here, correct? You talked to Carmilla about getting a job, so you may be behind the bar since she is not? Yes. Oh, that's right. Okay, then I'm I'm next to him talking, probably. Okay. Um, so, uh, here's a cool thing about Eden's Grove, is it has a special move that we're going to do. Huh. So I would like, we're going to roll one of Eden's Grove's moves called Nightmares, and when you go to sleep inside of the town, roll plus the monsters you've killed. Uh, and, uh, we're gonna do that now. So... You both roll a uh, 2d6 and add 1 to it because of the one murder you did. <laughs> okay. All right. So 2d6 and what? Plus plus 1? Yeah, 2d6 plus 1. Good. Um, 7. 7. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> yeah. So you both had a rough night last night? Um you did not sleep well. You had some weird nightmares and um Finley, in your dream, you were trapped inside of a mirror, and you, like, you couldn't, you, you were running around frantically uh, trying to break the mirror, and you just remember this um, ever-increasing uh, desperation and anxiety as you kept doing everything you could to break this mirror, but you just, to no avail, until you eventually woke up in a cold sweat. Wow. That's rough, buddy. And Sheena, you... You also had a pretty rough nightmare, and it was about being chased through the woods by, um, spring Jack? Hmm. And as you are going through the woods, and as you're being chased, it's getting ever and ever closer, and as you're running, you can feel this mounting panic, and then you fall down, and when you look up there, these two red eyes, and then you woke up. PTSD. Cool. A little bit. Um... That's about when uh, the camera turns and cuts to outside of the Red Wine Lounge, and we see Luke Stiles, <laughs> who is riding into town on their motorcycle, pursued by a small... Pursued by bear. <laughs> no. We already, we already did the bear. The bear is dead. <laughs> we killed it. It's a Shakespeare joke. I know, yeah. I'm yeah. aware. Um, so... 
Uh, Luke, you are pursued into town on your motorcycle, um, and behind you, running at a speed that you did not think legs were capable of, is a small creature uh, that is about the size of a pair of pants, and it is made entire. It is white, kind of um, milky skin that reflects the moonlight on it, and it just kind of has these two long legs that connect to a bulbous head, <laughs> where there is no features but two black beady eyes, and it's just kind of jogging at you. <laughs> Luke! Oh, man. And uh, you you uh, have just drove into town, you've been pursued by this thing from outside of town into town, and uh, you haven't seen any open establishments until you've come across this lounge where all the lights are on and you can hear just the bustling voices of, like, a large crowd inside. And this thing is just, you know, like, trucking behind you. <laughs> Um, I, I pull in, um, Luke pulls into the parking lot really quickly, like, you hear the skid of his tires, and mm -hmm. he brings out his kickstand, like, kind of stumbling as he gets off, and he, and he's running one hand through his hair, he's, like, looking back, he's totally Yeah, it's still running out. at you. It's <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, it's like a slow jog for it, but it's still moving <laughs> impossibly fast. <laughs> he's... Completely and utterly terrified as he's fumbling to make sure his bike will stay in place, and he grabs like his backpack that he had on his back, and he just kind of runs towards the door and kind of bursts in. And he closes it behind him, his back against it, and he's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> now, does the Red Wine Lounge have windows we can see yes, out of? Yes, it does. What yeah. do we see? <laughs> Fin um, Finley's at the counter, and they just turn and, like, go back to cleaning their cup, and they're like, should we do something about that? Yeah, outside the window, you just see this, like, just peeking in is just a small, featureless white head with two beady black eyes just staring inside, <laughs> directly at Luke. Sheena gasps and has, like, Steven Universe star eyes. That thing is terrifying. Please, please. Please let me let me just stay here until it goes away. There's a beat of silence, and then you just hear like uproarious laughter from this entire crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just like Carmilla is like hand over her heart, like beaming. The um That is exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> The person across from her, a kind of uh, androgynous figure who is dressed in um, similar, like, bike riding gear to you with a, a scarf around their neck, just kind of, like, glares at you. Oh. And, like, out the window, and then, like, turns back to Carmilla and, like, taps the um, table in a kind of, like, can we, can we focus um, sort of gesture. And, like, everyone just kind of ignores it and goes back to what they were doing. Um, few points of interest, Luke. You see, um, just some people you notice. You see a beautiful, uh, statuesque red-haired woman at a table near you who is having a conversation with, uh, the, uh, the, uh, person dressed similar to you that I mentioned before in the scarf. Um, you see, uh, like, a lot of people in interesting clothing that appear to be armed and not really hiding it. Um, you see an old, uh, an older gentleman with, uh, this, like, graying, tight, uh, curled, uh, blonde hair, who is just kind of in the corner next to a jukebox, just scowling. Um, you see a beautiful Asian woman, um, Sheena, what are you wearing today? Um... Hmm. A black long sleeve shirt that's like cut off around mid uh forearm and that has like a wider neck opening part and a long and flowing uh dark green skirt. And you see a uh an androgynous person with uh Finley, you have freckles, yeah? Now I do. <laughs> I mean, you're like, you're, uh, yeah, so you see an androgynous freckled person behind the counter who appears to be the bartender. Uh, you also see at the bar a man that is impossibly large and impossibly wide, who, like, he looks like he's the size of a Buick, and he's been crammed into, a, like, a, a nice suit. 
and like the closest touchstone you have is if you've seen the Harry Potter movies, um, <laughs> Hagrid. But like, if Hagrid got jacked, Luke just makes a mental note to kind of keep his distance because while he may look like the size of Hagrid, if he looks jacked, that means he's like a freaking giant, and Luke ain't about that. Yeah. He's he like takes a swig of beer and like laughs and he goes, "Oh, that's not going to do anything, <laughs> little friend. Little friend, why didn't you kill it? What do you mean, kill it with what? I'm what what I have? Sheena's already outside. Okay. I'm, how did he get past me, Jamie? Luke is like his back is against the door. He's right. busy staring at Jack Taggart. Well, he still has his back <laughs> pressed to the door. You walk over to the doorway and you and you uh, see this stranger who is pressed against it very nervously. I just open the door with him you, against it. Just move <laughs> them aside. Um, fin- Finley moves out from the counter and picks up their hunting rifle, which is leaning right up against no. the door next to Luke, and just kind of like looks at Luke like, yeah, we got this. Okay, so you two step outside and you see this white, uh, j- you see this white-legged creature. It crouches down in the kind of, like, a, how do I describe this position? It's like half crouch, just its legs are splayed, one to the left, one to the <laughs> right, like at a perfect 90 degree angle, just with the head in the middle, it forms like a perfect square with the ground. And its eyes so, just, and its eyes just kind of wait, glimmer. <laughs> not to date the episode, but pink ship. Yep. Ah no. This is yes. a different reference. How dare you? <laughs> Sheena leans down next to it, just like starry eyed and just mm, he's so cute. Luke is peeking out through the window, like he's like from the side from where the door is looking out and kind of mentally hoping that this pink haired and um and Drogers person is just gonna shoot it. <laughs> no. It kind of it kind of hops backwards, but it's still in the same like square position with its legs. <laughs> <laughs> Can I pick it up? Yeah. I mean go for it, Thug. Let I think that's a roll. Yeah, okay. Um Act under pressure um, uh, what even is this? <laughs> it's fine, I got an eleven anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm okay, sure. Whatever it is, need... I got an eleven. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. You just pick it up and its legs go limp and just dangle ab- under it. It looks at you with its like beady eye uh, like sparkly like eyes that like reflect the moonlight and it just kinda like neeps. It's like meep, meep. <laughs> <laughs> Finley's just like, well I can't shoot it now. <laughs> this is mine now. It, like, kind of, like, its head kind of pulsates when it squeaks. <laughs> like, it has to flex to make the sound, but it's flexing its skull. I love it. This this is my pet now. Its legs are s- still under it, just dangling, completely limp. Well, Sheena just kind of does, like, the, the baby hold thing and just, like, puts it on her hip. It's just, yeah, this is mine. Finley walks over and is like, so what do we do? Drop it off at the pound? No, I am keeping this. This is my baby now. You can't keep that in our apartment. We don't. We didn't pay the lease for any pets. I, <laughs> I'll sneak it in. Do we even know if it's fixed? <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's just legs connecting to a head. You see no reproductive organs on this thing. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be a problem. It wiggles its toes a little bit. <sighs> And, like, kind of, like, kicks its legs like it's making, like, the running motion towards Luke, but it's not touching the ground, so its legs are just kind of just <laughs> kicking in the air. Sheena goes next to the window and just kind of holds it next to the window closer to Luke. Everyone everyone raises their glasses in unison and cheers. <laughs> Luke jerks his head back. He is absolutely terrified. This thing chased him. <laughs> yeah, it like it keeps looking at you, man. Like, and it, it's 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 just it's not breaking eye contact. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Luke kind of goes back from looking out the window, like, nope, I'm hiding again. <laughs> At the most, Finley crosses their arm and is like, there's no pets allowed in the bar. Yeah. Do you know that? Except for service animals. Are you just making this rule up? Have you spoken to Carmilla? I mean, Finley works there. He's they're pr- They've probably read all the rules, but Carmilla hasn't. Carmilla's probably like, yeah, let the dogs in. Let's pour them a bowl of beer. Carmilla, uh, I will say, if you would like, Carmilla is next to the window. You can, uh, like, talk to her about this. No, no, Finley, Finley just said that, whether they knew or not. They just said no <laughs> dogs allowed. Or no pets allowed. <laughs> They're mostly just like, I don't want this two-legged thing running on the counters. Well, does anyone have a belt or something? It sticks its two legs out in an arrow towards Luke and just kind of points them aggressively. <laughs> oh my gosh. Luke, I need to borrow your belt. <laughs> you don't know this person's name. <laughs> oh, that's true. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I, uh, mm-hmm. I need, I need, a, I need your belt. Why? He like p- opens the door and goes, why? Well, I don't have a leash. I'm not giving you this thing. That thing chased me. Kill it. No. Sheena, I... I have rope in the truck. It's parked right over there. Oh, yeah, okay, that works. Beep, beep. Carmilla furrows her brow as she hears this conversation. She's like, oh, don't let it in. Thank you! I'm not letting it in. I'm gonna tie it up outside like a normal dog. You don't know where that thing's been. I'll give it a bath when I get home. Uh, Luke turns and looks at this beautiful red-headed lady and goes, thank you so much. She just... She gives the widest smile. I mean, Finley already said we're not letting it in, so like... <laughs> I ha- I have a question. How do I tie this thing up? Do I, like, tie the rope around its bulbous head? Or do I tie it around one of its feet? Tie it like it's a climbing gear. Ah. So around both legs and then around the head. Yeah. Sheena does that. Okay, are you tying it to a tree outside? Well, I'm sure there's bike racks. <laughs> okay, so you tie it to the bike rack. Yeah. All right. This is animal cruelty. It looks at you, and, like, it looks back over where it knows Luke is, even if Luke is, like, obstructed by the wall, and it just, it, it, it like, furrows its entire head. And it just, like, makes more, like, aggressive squeaks. Does it, like, just get wrinkly all on top yeah, of Yeah, its, its head? face just wrinkles, and, like kind of makes it look angry, but mostly it just makes it look like a wrinkled, just a wrinkled ball. I imagine it looks kind of squished. Sheena, look what you've done. It's turned into a raisin. (laughs) Poorly ironed pants. (laughs) Speaking of pants, this thing needs some. It is pants. Finley, it is pants. Give it some shorts or something. Uh, yeah, I think I've got some short skirts. It's way too fleshy. I can give it a skirt. It's gonna be so pretty. Oh my god. It, like, starts to crouch and uncrouch and crouch and uncrouch as it's, like, testing the ropes on it as it's, like, trying to figure out how to escape. (laughs) And it's just kind of just crouching rhythmically. (laughs) Sheena pats it on the head and just... Kisses it on the forehead and just, there, there, it's okay, buddy. I'm gonna give you a nice home. I'll figure out whatever the hell you eat. It's gonna be great. (laughs) (laughs) I just shrieked. (laughs) That was me! (laughs) I love it so much! It's it's like when I was doing the Mothman screeches. (laughs) Okay. I just love it so much. (laughs) <laughs> Do you go inside now? Yeah, I'm going inside. <laughs> okay. When you go inside and you close the door and you look outside to check on it, you see it is sitting on one of the bikes and it's just pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> just pedaling furiously. Yeah, just pedaling furiously. It's not moving, but it's just it's just pedaling. Um, okay, so you're all now inside the Red Wine Lounge. Finley goes back to their spot at the bar. <laughs> okay. Hercules, like, takes another drink and, like, like, shakes his head and he's like, you should, you should squish it. I am not squishing my baby. 
You've already become attached. That's the pr- next thing you know. You'll be naming it. I will be naming it. No, you'll then you'll then. That's the secret. You say. You see. If you name it, you become more attached, and you're already too attached. What is too attached? I mean, he has a point. Hercules furrows his brow, and he's like, "Hmm." I mean, what's the harm? They, mm, they, <laughs> mm, they look cute, but they travel in packs. They. I will adopt all of them. There's more of these things. Oh, they, they're all over town and in the woods. That It's an infestation. And he, like, gestures vaguely. He's like, uh, we stopped dealing with them because it was, it was pointless. Sheena's doing, like, the furrowed eyebrows and, like, the math signs everywhere, trying to figure out how to adopt every single one of them. <laughs> He's like, think of them like rodents or seagulls. They are mostly nocturnal. They come out at night, they kick over some stuff and make a ruckus, and then they move out of town. Sounds like basically all of us. (laughs) And he, like, slaps the bar and the entire building shakes. (laughs) Luke jumps. Finley automatically, like, leans back to hold the bottles (laughs) against the wall so they don't tip off. Uh, The large man waves at you, Luke, and says, Come here, little friend! I'm like six foot, I'm not that short. He goes, everyone's little to me. He's got a point. (laughs) Yeah, this man is like eight feet tall. I could eat you. (laughs) Don't. And Luke kind of like squeaks that out and then he goes, please don't. He goes, I wouldn't. I've got a fine meal right here. And he like pats the bar and you see a, a plate and it's just got like a hot pocket on it. Luke is very perplexed and very nervous as he sits next to this giant man. Finley leans over to Camilla. Do we even sell those here? Carmilla nods and she's just like, I stopped buying real food and just kind of started picking up microwavable stuff at the at the grocery store. So, yeah, it's like it's Hot Pockets. We got some corn dogs. Um, those little microwavable sandwiches, some cup of noodles, um... Huh. There's no microwave. Are are you using the employee's microwave for this? She's like, "It's, it's my microwave. I mean, I guess. She just, like, raises her eyebrows and she's like, are you telling me how to use my microwave? (laughs) (laughs) I... Just wanted to know how much they cost. <laughs> <laughs> Carmilla gestures and she's like, "Oh, I've worked out a deal with the grocery store uh, manager. I don't pay for things there." Okay. <laughs> I want to know what you how you work that out. Hundred percent. Um, hundred percent profits. I guess. <laughs> she grins and she's like, "My winning personality." <laughs> Finley's like, "This is not what I had in mind when I wanted a job." Again, the person uh, Carmilla is sitting with at this table, like, furrows their brow and taps the table in the let's focus action again. And Carmilla's like, sorry, sorry, uh, dears, if, if you could leave us be, and, like, goes back to talking to this person. Um, Hercules places his very large arm around Luke and, like, beams and is like, what brings you into town? Whatever the fuck that thing is! Cuts back to outside. <laughs> it is it is no longer on the bike, and it is sitting on the bike rack with its legs just straight out in the direction of Luke. <laughs> what? what is it even doing? <clears throat> and it, it like it has toes at the end of its feet, like perfect, like very human feet. It does not have claws. It has five toes, toenails, the whole thing, just milky white, and they're just pointed directly at Luke. And, and it's like balancing. Yeah, it's it's perfectly balanced on this th- on the bike rack. I don't like that at all. He goes, "Don't mind them; they're harmless, unless they're basically raccoons. Raccoons are and very dangerous." Yeah, you've never, ha- sir. Have you ever met a raccoon? Yes, I fought one. Met personally, like. Yes. 
I've fought a raccoon or two in my day. He also fought a bear, which was not actually a bear. He what? grins and he's like, I fought that bear to a standstill. What? If it wasn't well, a bear, what the hell was it? I mean, Hercules, I'd say we fought it to a little more of a standstill. We killed it. He grins and he's like, I'm busy. What the <laughs> hell? I don't have time to kill everything I run into. Sometimes you have a meet and greet at the local gazebo and you just don't have time to finish it all. Yeah, that's fair. What the hell do you all do? Nev- nope, nope, again. Well, if you really want to know, Sheena, like, puts her elbow no. on the table and looks at him. No, no, just- can I please just get- get some rum? Absolutely! You don't even card, you're just like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Finley's finally happy to serve someone. Because at this point, everyone in town is so used to Camilla doing absolutely nothing that they just kind of grab their drinks and Finley's like, please, let me. Oh, yeah. I bet there was a few days of, like, when you first started, people just walking behind the counter and you're like, no, not when I'm back here. <laughs> and just, like, taking it. Yeah. You're like, no, please, I please. That's exactly what happened. Uh so Finley's happy enough to mix up a drink for them. And you serve it. Uh, Hercules still has his arm around you, Luke. And he's, like, laughing, and he's like, It's just, it's just a little wee monster. You should see what else we've got here. <laughs> what do you mean, monster? <clears throat> and Luke clears his throat again, and he goes, Damn, I need to work on that. Um, <clears throat> What the hell? I think what? it's adorable. What is... No, it's not. That thing is freaking walking pants. No, 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 no. I meant you. <laughs> he turns a bright red, like his pale Jesus turned as red as his flannel shirt, <laughs> contrasting very much to his pale blue, his pastel blue hair. He's like, what? Hi, I'm I'm Sheena. What's your name? Uh, Luke Styles. My pronouns are he, him, his. Okay. Well, Sheena, Hercules, Finley. Hi. <laughs> Hello, little friend. <laughs> I and he just tips back the rub like he just downs it in one go. Dear God. <sighs> I'll say again. This is Hercules. I I got that. I got that. He fin he picks up the hot pocket and just drops it in his mouth. Oh, like, goodness. he had to pick it up between two fingers and, like, place it. It's just, it's just one bite. He just, he swallows it, and he just, like, looks sadly down at the plate. Luke has his hand over his eyes still, and he's just like, I, I, another, you know what, not, not, not rum. Get me a shot of vodka, whatever you got, please. Sure. I'll have a glass of that, too, while you're at it. Okay. Luke is still a bright red. <laughs> Finley just, like, pulls out two cups, and then, like, like, you know, you're supposed to drink vodka in, like, shots. It just takes two tall cups and just kind of fills them up, like, halfway. <laughs> like, uh, it would be at least, like, three or four shots inside of that cup. <laughs> Hercules eyes it meaningfully. She Sheena takes hers, and uh, Luke probably takes his, and she clinks his glass. Her glass against his and just welcome to Eden's Grove. You, the old man at the jukebox, just like yells across, "It's terrible here!" Dear God! And he just kind of takes like what would be the equivalent of a shot out of it. Like he just downs it quick, and then he goes, "I've heard of it, like once or twice, but not really that often." Hercules raises his eyebrows at that, and he's like, oh, you've heard of us. Where did, how did you hear about the town? It was like, I was searching through my, my Instagram, and it was just like, this huge thing, like, post I saw about, I, I saw a, like, I don't know, like, a freaking moth man on my car in Eden's Grove or whatever. I don't, I don't remember. It was just, the name's familiar. Hmm. Instagram. <laughs> and he, like, strokes his beard and meaningfully, like, looks across at Carmilla, who you can tell is definitely, like, eavesdropping on the conversation while this person talks at her. Finley, Finley leans over to Sheena and is like, there's a Mothman here? 
I guess so. I mean, do we need to add that to our portfolio? Uh, probably. What, what are y'all talking about? Um, yeah, just our job. <clears throat> what? It's work. We're we're off business right now. Let's not talk about that. Hercules grins and he says, "Should I explain it or should you?" I mean, I can say it pretty well. Say what? Take it away. And he downs his beer and gets up and w- walks off. We're monster hunters. Everyone in this bar is a monster hunter, except for you. Uh, what? Or are you in this entire time you were just faking your innocence? What the? What do you mean, monster hunter? You mean there's more of that crazy thing out there? Yeah, he's not a monster hunter. What? Well, <clears throat> he just grips his hair and tugs and he's like, what the? And he just dumps the rest of that and he goes, okay, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, we, we don't hunt things like that out there. Cuts back to <laughs> the thing out there. We hunt things like, I don't know, spring Giant Jack. puppet bears? That. What? Y'all talked at the same time and I... I said spring Hill Jack, she said giant bu- puppet bear. Same thing. Same thing. spring Hill Jack was a, was a serial killer in London way back during the report. What do you mean? But spring him Jack. Time and space is whack. Um, a woman uh, at a table nearby, you recognize her as Belle, the uh, nice lady that uh, gave you advice to talk to Henry earlier, uh, that was over up at the lodges. She, like, raises her glass and she's like, here, here, and downs <laughs> it. <laughs> Luke goes, that I, I can attest to. I, I understand. I, I get that. <sighs> Just... <clears throat> okay, so you, and he points to Finley. Finley, uh, got any specific... He's, like, just pointing. He doesn't want to say it, but he goes, pronouns? Uh. I I go by they, them. Good, good to know. Uh. People forget, though. I don't mind. Uh, all right, I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Um, you, pretty lady who... Adopted the creepy monster. Um, Sheena. Hi. Sheena. Okay. Pronouns? Uh, she, her. Okay, thank you. Um, and you're Hercules. Yeah. He strokes his beard for a moment and then just shrugs and goes, I, it doesn't matter. We all say he, him. Okay, then. <laughs> He's just looking up at Hercules and he goes, Oh, dear God, I'm... Whatever, whatever you prefer. And, like, grins. <laughs> I think this large man has a crush on this smaller man. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I imagine that sound was just Luke falling off of the chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if Sheena said that out loud, that would be Luke. Oh, no, that was Sheena. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Luke fell out of his chair. He wasn't expecting that. Hercules just picks up Luke and places him back on the stool and is like, well, he does have a certain appealing quality, but I can't say I'm looking for a relationship right now. (laughs) Finley just turns and walks silently down the bar. (laughs) (laughs) Finley's like, nope. And Luke's just like, Luke's face is like, his neck is red. Like, his ears and his neck are now red too. And he's just like, I don't know what is going on. I'm just... So, (laughs) Finley, um, as you walk away, you see that uh, the bar is especially full uh, tonight. You see see Carmilla speaking with that person earlier uh, at the table near the window. You see uh, the town sheriff, uh, Georgina Dubain, who you've met before, uh, who is eating a thing of nachos and uh, watching the TV. You see Belle, uh, the woman that you spoke to earlier over at the lodges, who you have heard rumors is a werewolf um, at a table with another gentleman that has, like, the same hair color as her. Um, You see uh, uh, the uh, older gentleman by the jukebox who has been introduced to you earlier as Van Helsing. Um, And uh, you also see another uh, younger gentleman with dyed silver hair. Uh, who is dressed 
uh, in like expensive clothes, but kind of sloppily, who is looking at the window at the um, at the legs creature, which is now just running around and like running as far as it can until the uh, rope pulls taut and like knocks it over and then it gets back up walks over to the bike rack and then runs straight at the bar again and is knocked over by the rope being pulled taut. Oh. Hey, Finley, how strong is that rope? I mean, stand, standard grade. If if you want to replace it, I've also got parachute cord. It's standard rope. Yeah, I think it's fun. It should be Standard good. rope. <laughs> One singular standard rope. No. Finley, um, they're going to stop by Camilla C... Um, Finley's really bad at conversation, so they, they'll they just butt in. They won't even know that they're doing anything wrong. Um, <laughs> they go up to Camilla and ask, got any local tasks to do around? Anyone need anything? Carmilla and this person were having a kind of heated conversation, but the second they see you coming over, they kind of stop. And Carmilla uh, gives you another smile, but it's not, it's like a... a it's not her general toothy smile that's just, like, wide and, uh, like, lifts up her entire face. This one is, like, strained and kind of pursed lips. Um, and she goes, I'm afraid the only thing I'm having difficulty right now is this, uh, lovely, lovely interloper across from me. And the, uh, androgynous person in, uh, bike riding gear, uh, looks up at you and lifts their, uh, hand and they go... Brana Doyle. Nice to meet you. I'm Finley. They shake your hand slowly and just kind of make long eye contact with you and goes, it is nice to meet you too, Finley. Fin- Finley turns to Carmilla and is like, so there being a problem, should I throw them out? Carmilla sighs and goes, they're always a problem. And Brana just shrugs. We We could ban them from the bar. Finley's not getting it. <laughs> Carmilla sighs is like, I've banned them from the bar, it doesn't help. And Brana just, like, sips of, like, from their cup, which you see has tea in it. And you don't think this bar has tea? And they just kind of, just kind of, like, shrug and go, I have a way of getting in where I need to. Okay. I will go back to work then. Yeah, and they go back to talking over what you see as a map. Another map of Eden's Grove on the table, and there are just, like, red lines across it, uh, kind of, like, making boxes over neighborhoods and stuff. And then there is a green line over some of the roads, that, and you see Car- uh, Carmilla has the red marker and Brana has the green marker. And they go back to their conversation. Finley stops and is like, can I get a picture of that map? Carmilla sighs and goes, it won't do you any good. We haven't finalized it yet. Finley shrugs and just snaps a pic with their phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Finley likes having things on their phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are also, you are making a map collection. Yes, that's that was Finley's idea. Anyway, Finley is going to go over to the well, but not also, also not well-dressed guy at the window. He, like, looks over at you and, like, nudges his head outside of the uh, window towards the Fresno Nightcrawler, which is uh, now stomping repeatedly on the rope. And he's like, that thing is persistent. Yeah, hopefully the rope is too. So are they really from Fresno? I... I mean, they were seen in Fresno. I wouldn't know. Um, Personally, I think they might be from here. I mean, who knows? I'm hunting Irish fairies here in America, so like... He raises an eyebrow and goes, Well, we certainly have our fair share of fae here. Not that I'd go out of my way to interact with them. Mm, Definitely not. They tend to be nasty. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting my manners. Hi, I'm Gray, and he uh, extends his hand. I'm Finley, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. And he looks back out at the window where the Fresno Nightcrawler is just kind of rolling back and forth. (laughs) And he goes, I have heard some people saying that we should kill it, but personally, I'm enjoying the entertainment. How about you? Well, it 
doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. They've been compared to rats, rodents, seagulls. I mean, none of those have too much of a negative effect, I'd say. They're really nothing. Even when they swarm together, they're just, you know, they're they're nothing. Most of us just hit them with our cars and keep going. <laughs> Sheena makes that noise from the bar. <laughs> just across the bar, just can sense it. F- Finley nods and is like, so, I take it they're pretty commonly seen? I haven't seen one in my time since I've been here, but... <laughs> You know, relatively, uh, they roam the streets at night. Uh, every once in a while, one of them gets into the garbage, or into a garage, or we find them in a tree or something. But you know, relatively common, at least in this part of town. He he just sighs and takes another drink and goes. Honestly, it's pretty boring. I, I wouldn't recommend messing with them. You're just wasting your time. Finley nods and, like, kind of writes some stuff out on a piece of paper that they plan to move into their, um, portfolio for... It's like a hydra. You cut off one useless head and two more useless heads sprout in their place. Um... Is... is that literal? Oh no! You can kill it. It, it, it. it won't like regenerate or anything. I'm sorry. I guess. I guess I should be more careful with my phrasing, considering what we deal with here. But no, it's just no matter how many we seem to kill, there's always more. Do you know where they come from, or do they just kind of show up? The woods mostly. They migrate. They migrate into town from the woods, and then kind of migrate back out. <sighs> Everything comes out of the woods, I guess. Most of it comes from the woods. Most? Well, there's the mountains and the lodges where we have our furry friends. A lot of the hunters still don't know how they feel about that. And he kind of, like, nudges his head over at Belle's table. He's like, and then there's, of course, the lake, which we've just all collectively agreed to avoid for now. And, of course, there's all sorts of strange stuff inside the town as well. Yesterday, I found a lamp post that was just kind of bent. And he, like, kind of gestures in the shape of, like, a... The, um... Like, uh, a swirly straw. (laughs) And he says, still don't know what that was about. Hmm. Interesting. He finishes his drink and gets up and, like, smiles and goes... Well, it's been fun, but I don't think I want to stay here all night and listen to everyone debate and watch that poor sap try to break out of a rope. And it cuts back to the uh, Fresno Nightcrawler, which is now kind of slamming its head into the rope (laughs) as if as if to nibble on it. But it does not have a mouth. My baby. (laughs) Finley nods. (laughs) He gets up, walks over, and, like, takes his coat off the coat rack and, like, puts it on. He walks out. You see him walk over to the Fresno Nightcrawler, pat it on the head, and then just kind of walk out across the street and into the night. Finley returns to Sheena and Luke at the bar. Uh, Sheena and Luke, uh, what have you guys been doing with Hercules? I have an idea. (laughs) Okay. Um, well, Sheena's been keeping that book uh, while Lu- while Finley has been like collecting maps and like making a huge map thing and doing all of the stuff in the town and writing- taking note of all that, Sheena is doing all the people. So she's been asking Luke questions. Okay, what kind of questions have you been asking Luke? Well, where did he come from? Where was he heading? Where did he get the bike? Why was he heading in this direction in the first place? Because we're kind of way <laughs> out here. Uh, is he single? Okay, slow down, slow down. Luke? Yes, he's would, single! <laughs> would um, you like to answer some of that? Okay, so... He, I'm from, like... D.C. area? I was taking a... I was gonna go to the West Coast. I was kind of taking, like, a, a gap year for, like, a road trip for myself. Um... I had the bike because I didn't want a car, because I don't need that much space. 
Um, plus, they're cool. Um, and last and most importantly, are you single? <laughs> I mean, yeah. What? <laughs> He's just so ready. She, she, you know, just like nods and takes notice. Good, good. That makes things easier. What does that mean? <laughs> Behind Sheena, you see Hercules nodding, and across across the bar, you see Carmilla, like, nodding. <laughs> Luke is so perplexed, he's like, this is the most I've ever people- what? He's just so perplexed, he's never had this many people find him cute, so he's like, what does that mean? <laughs> oh, sweet boy. She Sheena closes the binder and puts it into her bag, and she's like, well, that's all my questions. Hercules leans over and is like, do you have a place to stay? Um, no, I normally just ask the places I stop at, um, if they have rooms. Well, I wouldn't recommend staying in my place. I would offer, but I can't really be left alone with people, and also there's that thing. Yeah, no. Cuts outside. Uh yeah, cut outside to the Fresno Nightcrawler, which now has its head on the ground and its legs in the air and is just kicking furiously. Uh, Finley. If we could have a long title for this episode, it should be Cuts Outside to the Fresno Nightcrawler. <laughs> well, other than that, Finley, are you open or should he try to get his own place? Finley's staying with Sheena. No, we were in different rooms. Oh, different rooms, yeah. They were across the hall, yeah. Like, we're in the same apartment building, but we're in different rooms. Yeah, we said across the hall from each other. Because I can't be left alone with people. Yeah. No. Um. <laughs> you, you can ask, um, who are they renting from? They're renting from just one of the local small um, apartment buildings. And, uh, you've spoken to the, uh, owner a couple times. You don't know if they have any vacancies right now? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know their name, but, like, ask them for oh, vacancies. Oh, yeah, they are... Their name is... I have something for this. Um... Let me see... Uh, it's Hank, uh... It's Hank Hohenheim. You can ask Hank Hohenheim if they have any vacancies. I was just planning on heading... Ow, I don't need a place to rent. Uh, buddy, it's pretty laid out. It's kind of dark. You're go probably gonna want a place to stay. Yeah, the yeah, local the motel, mo maybe? motel. Yeah. Hercules like looks meaningfully outside and goes, "It's not safe to travel at night." The Denny's it's is open twenty four seven. Especially nowadays, I would not recommend the Denny's. I don't recommend the Denny's either. What? <laughs> Luke just kind of shrinks down like a bit. <laughs> What's wrong with the daddies? What's wrong with the daddies, man? Hercules, like, smiles and goes, the food there is terrible. Oh, it's one of those Denny's? That's like Luke instantly gets that. It's not even the good Denny's? No, it's a it's a bad Denny's. If there was a, if there was a Denny's spectrum, it would be at the bottom. It's a cryptid Denny's. <laughs> he nods solemnly. <laughs> He goes, I would offer, I would let you stay the night on my couch, little friend, but I'm afraid I can't have visitors. That doesn't sound ominous at all. He just grins and he goes, I'm renting and, you know, the owners are particular. Again, that doesn't sound ominous at all. I'm renting from family. It's, you know, you do things for family. It, like I said, and he just takes a sip of his drink. Doesn't sound ominous at all. <laughs> he, like, furrows his brow and goes, fine. <laughs> and he ge he gets up and, uh, like, bows at Finley and goes, thank you for the wonderful evening. And, uh, he, like, finger guns over at, uh, Carmilla and walks out of the building. Bye, Hercules! Uh, bye! Goodbye, little friend! Bye, Jack Hagrid of... And Luke looks down at his drink, he goes, Ah, shit, I can't drive. This was a bad idea. Well, you'll just have to stay here. Carmilla gets up and walks over to the uh, bar and smiles and goes, You can stay with me. No. 
<laughs> Hard no. This is a bright. Like he's just turning redder and redder by the second. He goes, uh, uh, oh, um. Staying at her place is worse than staying in my place. You don't know that he like. No, I do know. You don't. She like frowns at you, Sheena, and like just decides to ignore you and looks back at um Luke and goes, "Look, my place is upstairs." If you need a couch, I am willing to provide one. That would be great. I just need someone to drive me to a motel in town. I have a truck. Carmilla sighs and goes, I don't have a vehicle, I'm afraid. And then, uh, Brana kind of coughs and goes, I do. Finley already said they have a truck. Mm-hmm. Uh... Options are being given. Uh... Also... Bron- Bron- Bronya? Brana. Brana? Um, mm-hmm. is wearing motorcycle gear, so, like... <laughs> Luke drives a motorcycle! Luke knows exactly how to- I know, but, like, it'd just be two people on a motorcycle instead of, like... <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah! It absolutely would be! Finley can fit the motorcycle in their truck! <laughs> Mm-hmm. And, but the thing is, Luke's debating. He goes, do I have an awkward, silent interaction in the car? Or a motorcycle where not talking is expected? <laughs> well, whichever one you choose, I'll help drive your cycle to the motel as well. You could also just wear the helmet inside the truck and not have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Finley's like, that is completely fine with me. Uh, I, as little talking as needed. Um, I would prefer to keep the bike here. I, I, it took a while to, to pay that off, so I would rather just keep it locked up here. Um, Outside of a bar with yeah. monster hunters. Carmilla, like, flatter, like, flutters her eyelashes and goes, I promise it'll be safe. Mm. I mean, it's <laughs> it's fine if I have locks. It's in my bag. As long as someone keeps that creepy thing away from me, I can lock my bike. Cut outside to the Fresno Nightcrawler, now just standing on top of Luke's motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it on my bike? <laughs> It's not. It's not sitting. It's. It's not standing on the seat. It's like that's his bike now. <laughs> it's standing on the head of the motorcycle, just staring still directly at Luke. What? Someone, please take it off my bike. <laughs> I'll do that when I get out there. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm. I'll take the motorcycle because I'm comfortable with riding a motorcycle. Cars are too spacious. Brana nods and goes, I was all done talking to this bitch anyway, and gets up and, like, walks out the door, and Cartmilla waves and goes, love you too! But, 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 uh, 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 how much for the drinks? And he's, like, pulling out his, like, wallet, which, need I, need I say, it is absolutely a Harry Potter wallet, you're, I'm gunning this thing. Just pay what you want. It, it, yeah, that's the thing about the Red and Wine Lounge. It's pay what you want. What? That's not how you run an establishment. Uh, Carmilla just shrugs and goes, it hasn't hurt my business so far. What do you... He just puts down, like, a ten. He goes, that, that should work. I don't know drink prices. I don't go to enough bars. Uh, outside, you see Brana uh, now wearing a motorcycle uh, helmet, and uh, they pulled their motorcycle out front, and they uh, have a secondary matching motorcycle helmet uh, p- uh, behind them that they uh, just pat, and then they look over at the Fresno Nightcrawler, which then like looks over at uh, Brana, and then slowly steps down onto the wheel of the motorcycle. And then slowly steps down <laughs> from the wheel of the motorcycle onto the ground, and then sits down. And Brana just like <laughs> waits. Uh, uh. Okay. Um. I. So this is a good place to come to talk, cause you mentioned monsters, and I want to know more about that, even though I'm absolutely terrified. Um. And thank you so much. Um. I didn't catch your name. Ma'am. 
Miss, oh, uh, are you outside now talking to Brana, or are you no, talking no, to no. Carmilla? This is Carmilla. Okay. Carmilla, uh, like, shakes your hand warmly and enthusiastically and goes like, I'm Carmilla, I run the bar here, and I would love to see you again. Okay, um... Don't trust her! He looks at Sheena real quick, he goes, I haven't had any bad interactions, so I think I'll make that choice for myself, but thank you so much for letting me keep my bike outside, just thanks, um... She laughs, and it's a very light musical laugh, and she goes, Sheena's just jealous. Excuse me? Of what? <laughs> Carmilla shrugs and goes, I can't read minds, dear. <laughs> oh, I wish you... <laughs> Sheena just grabs her glass and glares and drinks it. <laughs> um, And Luke turns to Finley and goes, Thanks for the ride, by the way. That was really, really... Nice. Um, and then thank you, Sheena, for talking again. I want to talk more about the monster, so I'll be here tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna head outside. Okay. Is- so you walk outside and you get on the motorcycle. Uh, with Brana, who drives you over to the town motel, and they park outside. And as you're getting off, and when you take over off your uh, motorcycle helmet and hand it over to Brana, Brana also has their helmet off, and they like look you dead in the eyes and goes, "Luke, right?" Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Look, here's the thing. This town is dangerous. And a lot of the people here make it their business to be part of that danger. Do you follow me? Not really, but continue. They they nod and go, If you hang around certain people and certain places here... I cannot guarantee your lifespan. Well, I mean, my technically my lifespan is uh, around 35 anyway, so... Eh. Well, your chances of living another year are dropping just very, very quickly. And they, like, shake their head and goes, I... you know what? Never mind. I'll be seeing you later, Luke. And they uh, drive off into the night. Um, meanwhile, back at the Red Wine Lounge, the night is winding down, and Carmilla is kind of shooing everyone out of the place uh, because uh, it's you know it's getting close to dawn, and she's like, "I'm tired. I've been up all night. Brana was here. They're exhausting." Sheena was here, they're exhausting. <laughs> and it's like slowly ushering everyone out of the bar and uh is getting, you know, closing down for the night or the day, I guess now. Sheena's going outside to her baby. Finley's <laughs> um cleaning up the last of the dishes. Yeah. Alright. Uh outside Sheena, you see a uh a young a uh, woman who appears to be of uh, Asian descent is uh, she's in um, like uh, overalls and a white shirt with a cat pattern on it. And they are uh, petting the Fresno Nightcrawler's head and like cooing at it. And their hair is up in a kind of messy ponytail. I see you like my new pet. She turns, like, and like very quickly and is kind of startled and is like, Oh! Oh, Sheena, there you are. And she gets up and, like, walks over to you and hugs you. Does she know who this is? She looks familiar, but you do, you can't place her. I'm, I'm sorry, do I know you? Uh, she, like, comes back from the hug, but she's still holding your hands. And she's like, Well, we've, we've never met before, but Sheena, Sheena, we're sisters. Sheena's speechless. Um, she kind of, you, uh, you now notice, uh, when you look down, that, uh, she's not wearing socks or shoes, and is just kind of bare-legged underneath, and it's one of the overalls that has, like, 
that is not pants, but cut to look like shorts. Oh, I love those. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, she uh, kind of like gestures towards her feet meaningfully and goes like, these are fake, just like yours are. Oh, I see. Okay, you had me worried there for a second. She smiles and her teeth are pointed. She goes, ever since I heard you moved to town, I've been looking for you. She Sheena grins very happily and she's just, well, I'm very ha happy to see you here. She smiles and is like, I'm very happy to see you too. We, we should talk. There's a, there's a lot I would like to discuss and I, I hate to do this, but I need your help with something. Of course. Always happy to hit, help a sister out. She, like, looks furtively around to make sure no one is nearby, and she leans close and goes, There are others in town, and I'm afraid we need to do something about them. Mm-hmm. How? What do you mean by others? Well, not all of our sisters exercise such uh, miraculous self-control as you do, Sheena. <laughs> well, I try my best. Thank you. She grins and goes, Um, I would give you a, a name or a number, but I don't really, um, hmm. She, like, looks around and is, like, thinking about it, and is like, I don't really know how I can get in contact with you, but, um, trust that I will be able to? And I think we should talk more in the future, if we can. Do you come here often? I do. One of my friends works here. That is incredibly brave of you. <laughs> Why? She, like, leans and is like, because they're hunters. Ah, uh, yes. They hunt people like you and I. How long do you think it is before one of them tries to shoot you or drive a sword through your back? Well, hopefully by the time that they trust me also as a hunter. Hmm. I can't say I do it your way, but, you know. She, like, grins and goes, I guess I just, I'll just have to trust my big sister on this. She does grinning. She, like... She squeezes your hands and then finally lets go of them and walks over to the Fresno Nightcrawler, pats it on the head, and goes like, Are you... do, do you want this? I do want him. She's like, oh, oh, okay. I I will have to get my own, I guess. That would be great. Then we could go to the park and just walk our Nightcrawlers. Oh, I, I meant... I meant to eat. Oh, uh, that too. I'm not eating this one, though. He's too cute. <laughs> they are... They are pretty adorable. Um, I have... I have another meeting. Another another engagement with uh, one of our sisters I had planned for today. Um, but soon. I'll be counting on it. She smiles and uh, walks off down the street. Finley, you finished up cleaning up the bar. Carmilla has... Uh, wished you good night, given you your check, and gone upstairs to sleep. All right, Finley goes out, locks the door behind them, and heads out to their truck, which is probably parked in the direction of both the motorcycle and the. Yeah, Sheena, do you take a ride uh, home with Finley? And if you do, where does the Fresno Nightcrawler sit? That's what I was just wondering. In the back. <laughs> <laughs> Would it be a normal thing that Sheena and Finley? Uh, take rides back. Yeah, they both live at the same apartment. I imagine so. Okay. Okay. So she Sheena lifts the Fresno Nightcrawler into the back and ties him down. It just lays down. Yeah. I was gonna say, like, as Finley walked out, they looked at Sheena and just went in the back. <laughs> <laughs> the Fresno Nightcrawler just lays down with its face down because, like, the sun is coming up and it doesn't like the light. Oh. <laughs> Wait, it's morning? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a it's about dawn. What is my shift? Oh my gosh! You have the night shift with Sheena, or at least you did this time. Well, with Carmilla, Sheena doesn't work there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry, Carmilla. <laughs> what was Sheena just like? Oh, 
No, that makes sense. Sheena can't stay at the apartment by herself, so she had to come. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you're your shepherd. You have to, you're a babysitter. You have to... Sh- oh my gosh, that's amazing. I'm like, oh, Sheena, I'm going to work. Hop in the car. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. So I think we can abstract... I think we can abstract the scene from there, and I just want to ask uh, the players, uh, do you have any plans or anything you would like to do real quick? Uh, do you have any plans? Do you have any threads you'd like to follow up on? Do you want to um, start planning a hunt or start looking into something to hunt? Do you want to go see Henry? Sheena's going to immediately go home. Well, yeah. So, like, it's morning, and they've all stayed up all night. Um, so they're probably going to go home and sleep. Sheena has to somehow sneak the Fresno Nightcrawler into the apartments without the landlord knowing. <laughs> I I know how. <laughs> How do you how do you sneak in this? F- uh, imagine meat pants. <laughs> this episode's heist is. <laughs> I'm going to give Finley my keys to my room. Tell him to go in. Tell him to go in there and open the window to the outside. And I'm gonna <laughs> chuck the Fresno Nightcrawler through the window. You're gonna chuck? I thought you were gonna say you were gonna climb up a spider lady, but no, you're just gonna chuck him. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be a roll, friend. <laughs> but like, what floor are we on? Probably second floor. It's probably a small apartment. That's gonna be an act under pressure. Yeah, it's like I don't want to turn into a spider and have someone accidentally see me. If someone sees yeah. a Fresno Nightcrawler, it's better than seeing yeah, me. Yeah, they're as just a spider. like this person is crazy with their obsession with rats. Pants. <laughs> <laughs> just these white pants. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, you gotta throw it head first. Yeah, definitely. Finley saying this. Finley saying this from the window. You gotta throw it heads first so its legs don't get stuck. <laughs> Oof! I got a seven again. Okay. Um, worst outcome, hard choice, or price to pay. Oh. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> So you toss the Fresno Nightcrawler up there, and you just miss the window. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and it, it like it spins, and it like kicks its feet into the wall, and you see it dig its like toes in, and it's just standing <laughs> sideways on the wall of this apartment. <laughs> oh no! And Finlay's gonna attempt to lean out of the window and lasso it in. That's that's also sounds like an act under pressure. What, what's that plus? That's, um, <laughs> that's um, plus cool. I got a ten. Nice. Okay, you lasso it, and it gives us it gives a like, <laughs> and you 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 pull on it for a moment, and it doesn't give because its nails are just deep into the wall, and you give another yank, and its and its feet give, and it's. <laughs> swings down and it hits its face against the wall. Oh no, my baby! And its and its legs are just kicking frantically now and then you slowly heft it up into and you pull it in through the window and it is now inside Sheena's apartment. Sheena gives Finley a thumbs up and just, thank you! Finley nods, closes the window and just drops the rope on the ground. Run free, little guy. And goes out of the room. <laughs> Okay. It immediately hops on t- on top of the couch. <laughs> is it jumping? Is it like doing a little kid jump on the couch? Yeah, it absolutely is. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a spring-loaded couch. <laughs> ching, ching, ching. Sheena, have you given it a name? Yeah. I do need to name it. All, all I have in my head is legs. Leggy. <laughs> you want to name it Leggy? I kind of do. Okay. You say that, but you have more legs than that thing does. <laughs> I'm a leg person. It's Mr. No Leggy. <laughs> Mr. Few Leggy. <laughs> Mr. Two Leggy. <laughs> oh, man. Do you think it has any weird, like, you know, the whole, like, pet a dog and the dog moves its head back or pet a cat and it moves its body down? Like, does does it have any weird? <laughs> its legs just dangle. It does both. Well, maybe you should pet it more, and we'll find out. Whoa! <laughs> it does squats to avoid you petting it. <laughs> you try to pat its head, and it just squats. Kind of just undulates. <laughs> it gets a little squawk.
Hey, Mark Experience audience. Thank you so much for listening to our show. I am happy to announce that we've started a coffee account while we're working on making a Patreon. So if you would like to support our work, head over to coffee.com slash Jamie Remy. That's spelled J-A-M-I-E-R-E-M-Y. And feel free to donate so that this can become my official job and I can create more content for you. If you want to see MXP art and laugh at the dumb jokes we make at our own show, you can find us on Tumblr at tumblr.com slash blog slash Mark Experience. Like the music? You can buy it all at markexperience.bandcamp.com. I am really proud of it. See you next time!